who I've never had the pleasure of meeting, Mark Edel. And, uh, and uh, somewhere along the line, in, in the late 90s, I created a website uh, dedicated to uh, Chicano music. And, and uh, the first paragraph on that website says, uh, this website is dedicating to promoting my music uh, and history, as well as that of my father. And um, with an emphasis on the East LA, what we call the East Side Sound, I grew up in East Los Angeles, and uh, many, many musicians have come out of that area over the decades. And so that, since that, I was a part of that, I know about it, I wrote a lot about that. And then a lot of the national Chicano artists, Chicano artists have gained national fame. So, you know, I've done this website, worked on it for 10 years. It's uh, markguerrero.com or markguerrero.net. And, uh, and it's become a resource. It's used in colleges. I get emails from all over the world where people are doing, uh, from professors, from students that are doing papers on Latino music, Chicano music. Uh, so it's been a wonderful thing. And the reason I do it is because um, there's not a lot of attention paid to us in the mainstream media. You know, you don't see us on uh, MTV or, you know, um, we're just not, as usual, kind of ignored. So this is a place where you can go and get information on the history of, of Chicano music. And that history always has to begin with my dad, uh, who is known as the father of Chicano music. Uh, he started uh, recording in 1939. And he's written many, many songs that have become standards uh, in Mexico and uh, all genres. He did comedy, he did children's records, he did rancheras, boleros, salsa, uh, you, you name it. He did everything and he was a great singer. Uh, and uh, my brother, a few years ago, did a documentary on my dad called La Guerrero, the original Chicano. And in fact, there's a few there for sale, but there's only five. I only brought a few because I'm. Going from here to Canada, and I can't take a bunch of CDs with me. They'll think I'm smuggling them or something. But uh, anyway, uh, you know, he, in a sense, he is the original Chicano, and he, he's the first, as Linda Rostad described him, the first great Chicano artist. So I, I prepared a slideshow to show you, and it lacked as a framework for what I'm going to say. You know, I don't have anything prepared written down. I'm just going to go along, show the slides, and talk about it. But uh, this is my dad right here. Uh, that was his first group in Tucson, Arizona. They were called Los Carlistas. And they, they, they had their own radio show in Tucson. They were only teenagers. And, and they were uh, selected to represent Arizona at the 1939 World's Fair. So, you know, my dad had never left Tucson. And suddenly he's in New York City in 1939. As he said, we were a bunch of hicks. They didn't know what the hell was going on. Uh, and they were on the national radio, Major Bo's Amateur Hour, and they performed at the World's Fair. They were in a couple of movies. So that was his first group. He's like, he's like, fell asleep. Now what do we have to do here? We're having a problem. Well, okay. with Carlistas also. Carlistas? Carlistas. Uh, uh, and they were named after uh, King Carlos of Spain. He was the king of Spain, and everybody was excited about him, and so they called themselves the Carlistas. Now this was his, his second group, it was called the Trio Imperial. Uh, they recorded for uh, Imperial Records in Los Angeles. It was his first, uh, well actually it wasn't his first, second record deal. Uh, but this trio, became, they did like maybe 60 recordings for, uh, for uh, Imperial Records. And uh, one of the historic things that my dad did at this time was with this trio, it was the first time he used uh, Pachuco talk, Galo. He put Galo on record. He, he was the first Chicano to put Galo, you know, ese, you know, all that talk on record. And he did it with the Trio Imperial way back in the, in the late 40s. Um, so uh, anyway, they, they, they did really well, and then they asked my dad to be a solo artist. So he went on to record like, 200 songs as a solo artist for Imperial Records. That helped make Imperial Records successful, and then it became a rock and roll label. They signed Fats Domino, uh, Ricky Nelson, and, and, but my dad was really the artist that got that label going. You know? And of course they ripped him off, of course. You know, but, uh, okay. 
Well, that's him, uh, probably, when he was a solo artist. He was probably in his uh, late 20s. That's my favorite picture of him. We used that photograph when he passed away. We used that for the service. A big poster of that. It's a great picture for that old-fashioned microphone. <coughs> Uh, now here was one of his early Pachuco records on Imperial, and he's a solo artist. He wrote the song it's called Los Chuco Suaves, and he did. He had a band that did a lot of cool boogie boogie swing, pre rock and roll, you know, blues in Spanish. And uh, this was in the late '40s, early '50s. But uh, in the late '70s, when the movie Zoot Suit was made, the play Zoot Suit by Luis Lopez, they used my dad's music. Including this song, Los Chupo Suaves, Marihuana Boogie, Vamos a Bailar, Luis Abroso Blues. So, you know, uh, so 30 years after he first recorded the song, it became more famous than ever. You know, they, they become, uh, and this was probably the most famous. And I'll give you a little taste of this. This is the song he did in like 1950 or so. Ya los tiempos han cambiado, usted está muy aguitado y está bote atravesado. Usted se baila del swing, boogie boogie quiere pan, pero eso ya torció y esto es lo que sucedió. Los chucos suaves bailan rumba, bailan la rumba y le zumba, bailan guaracha sabrosón, el botecito y el danzón. Los chucos suaves bailan rumba, bailan la rumba y le zumba, bailan guaracha sabrosón. El botecito y el danzón, los chucos suaves bailan rumba, bailan la rumba y le zumba, bailan guaracha sabrosón, el botecito y el danzón. So there you go, that's how it sounded. Pretty cool. You know, that song is still hip today. You know, I play it in my concerts and my gigs and people love it. Uh, it's been recorded. It was recorded on Roy Cooter's album. My dad recorded it in his 80s on the Chavez Ravine album by Roy Cooter. Uh, so here he was in his 80s, still rocking out, and that song will always be hit. <clears throat> this, this, this was his band. They, called, they were called the Los Lalo Guerrero y Sus Cinco Lobos. And they were really cool. Uh, as a matter of fact, you know, you've heard of Los Lobos, obviously, right? Well, uh, one of Los Lobos, his uncle or, or his you know, relative was in this group. And uh, so I always thought maybe that's where they got the name Los Lobos. You know? Could be. You probably want to admit it. And here, this is him in the 60s. He's getting a little older. And uh, always made records, always continued doing what he did. And that was his orchestra in the 1960s. He had a nightclub called Lalo's in East LA, and that was his orchestra. I mean, once in a while, they'd go on tour. And I was a kid during this time. I remember all those guys. Here, here's a few of his albums. I don't want to block anything here. A um, few of his albums, just so you can see. This is an example of this Que Vuelva Los Braceros. He's in the 60s. Here's one, he used to do a lot of comedy records. He had a song called Tacos for Two, There's No Tortillas, uh, uh, Elvis Perez, the Mexican Elvis, uh, Pancho Claus, the Chicano Santa Claus. And so he had a lot of comedy, he's very well known for his comedy stuff, and, and this was a parody album that he did. Uh, then, he, then he did uh, Little Mexican Squirrels, like the Chipmunks, Alvin and Theodore, and he made about 20 albums of these really popular in Mexico. So he did all these children's records. I mean, he did everything. It was unbelievable. And there's the Zoot Suit album. There he is in a Zoot Suit. He was already probably in his early 80s at that point. And that's me when I was young and skinny. Right? And he was, we were Laurel and Hardy, I think he was just saying. But uh, that was in the early 80s. Then we started doing concerts together. Southwest Museum in LA. And then, then in the early, uh, the late 90s, I formed a band to back him up, guys my age. That's 
That's me there uh, in the middle. Um, and uh, the guy's my age, and uh, really cool. We used to back him up in concert. We played a lot of uh, cool venues. Uh, and I'm glad we got a chance to do that. And I would always sing a couple of my songs, too. And it was called Lalo Guerrero with Mark Guerrero, the second generation. And my dad uh, had the honor of getting the National Medal of Arts from President Clinton in 1997. Uh, and my brother and I went with him to the White House. And, uh, you know, it was an incredible experience. Chicago's at the White House, so it was pretty cool. And uh, there it is again. This is funny, this picture, I, I didn't notice I was in it until recently. Here's a picture of my dad with Clinton. I'm back there lurking in the shadows of me. I'm lurking in the background, uh, drinking uh, champagne. But uh, like the president was saying, uh, you know, about my dad hugging people. I mean, he, Clinton was standing on the dance floor, and my dad just went up behind him and put his arm around the president of the United States, you know, the Secret Service. What's going on here? And, and Clinton turned around and, and just hugged him back. It was so cool. But that was an amazing, uh, amazing experience. And that's me there. I, I, I'm going to look different in every picture because I have different hair, different ages, different weights. <laughs> believe me, it's me. When I say it's me, believe, just believe me. <laughs> but, but that's me on the left, my brother, my dad, and Quentin. And, uh, and here I am flirting with Hillary. I really did like the words. I felt something. I think she did too, really. So, and this was during the model of Lewinsky time, you know. Although it didn't come out till later. So I actually had a chance with her. I think I had a chance. Okay, now that's uh, me and my dad and my brother. When we got back from uh, Washington, we, we went to a professional photographer and took a picture. It's a great picture. So I'll give you a couple of quick examples of some of my dad's uh, other songs. Uh, here's, here's one that I recorded with my dad in the 60s. I was only like 15 years old, and uh, it was a song, I don't know if you've heard of it, it's called La Mini Falda de Reynaldo. And that's where the mini spirits were getting. He made this funny song, a rock and roll song. And what he did was he had a, a Rachetta band, a Tejano band, and he had my teenage band in the studio at the same time, and they would play, and he'd sing with them, and then we'd come in, sing with us, and then they'd come in, and we'd come in. You know, there was no trickery like today. It was just real. This is what you're hearing here, and, and I'm on the 12-string electric guitar here. I'm about 15 years old. It's called La Mi Fala de Reynaldo. Let's see. Sometimes we'd run out of tortillas and he'd go to breakfast and 
There's no tortillas. You know, there's only bread. Where's my tortillas? Oh, we're hungry. Can I take bread today? No. So one day, just like, there's no tortillas. There's only bread. And he thought of this idea of writing a song to Osolo Mio. And so, this is truly heartfelt. He really, he really felt this. Yeah, he, this, he meant this song. Very emotional. I love tortillas <laughs> And I love them dearly You'll never know Just how sincerely I love the corn ones Y también de harina but when my wife calls out from la cocina, there's no tortillas, there's only bread, there's no tortillas. And I feel so sad My grief I cannot hide There's no tortillas For my refresh And uh, I've got one more of his things to play, just to show that he did everything. And, you know, he uh, also, as I said, in the late 40s, he was doing what would be called pre-rock and roll. He was doing boogie-woogie, swing, blues. But by mid-1955, uh, like he recorded what is a rock and roll song. And this is before Richie Valens. So he was probably the first Chicano that was rocking. It's just that Richie was the first one that did it in English and then went mainstream. But check this out. This is, to me, this is as good as... Uh, Bill Hayden in the comments or Elvis or anybody. De todas las muchachas que hay aquí para el rock and roll te escojo a ti. El saxofón ya va a tocar el tomarín de dos pingües, cugar a magarati y fue. Passed away in 2004, 
But I got to know him quite a bit in the last uh, 10, 15 years of his life. Very unusual character, but uh, uh, very, very talented. He, he, could, he wasn't a singer, but he could play piano, bass, uh, taught voice lessons, uh, taught piano. But, uh, but, but he, what's ironic is that uh, he was a classical musician, he was a jazz musician, he was a society musician, but what he's most known for is his Pachuco stuff. And uh, he formed a band when he was very young called the Pachuco Boogie Boys. And, uh, and uh, one of the members was a guy named uh, Piano, a guy named Gano, who wound up being famous on his own later. And uh, this, this, this uh, CD was released just a few years ago on our Hooli Records. And it has a few of my dad's songs on it too, and his Pachuco things as well. But it's ironic because truly, I, I, I've interviewed Don Tosti, and you know he didn't really like that stuff. I mean, he did it for commercial reasons. He said, "I said, why did you do that?" He goes, "I like houses, I like cars." <laughs> but he, his heart was in jazz, you know, and, and classical. He was very sophisticated, so this was like playing around in him. But ironically, that's what he's most known for. When he passed away, it was like Chuko, the you know. And there's been this controversy with my dad, who did it first. Yeah. My dad did it first. Not just because of my dad. But as I said, my dad did it way back with the Rio Imperial. Way back. But uh, anyway, Don Tosi's a great musician, and uh, he should be uh, remembered. He was a composer, and, you know, played seven instruments. He was pretty amazing. Band leader, we had a Latin band in the 60s. That's him shortly before he died in 2004. And once again, that's me, you might not recognize him. Keep changing. <laughs> and then there's Richie Valens. You've all heard of Richie Valens, La Bamba. He came out in the uh, late 50s and became a big rock and roll star. And died tragically in the plane crash. Uh, oh, uh, before we get off of Don Tosi, let me play you one of his Pachuca, Pachuca Boogie. Don Tosi for Pachuca Boogie Boys. Chan to Hollywood and, and 
signed him up sort of as the heir apparent to Richie Valens. And he recorded uh, some singles, and uh, one of them became famous because he wrote a song, I don't know if you've ever heard of a song called The Hippie Hippie Shape. But uh, what happened was this record came out, Chan left the label, you know, uh, the guy kind of crook, and even Richie's family told Chan, you know, this guy's a crook and all this. So he split off with him. But uh, Bob Keen released the album, the record, to be shape in England and in Australia. And um, none other than the Beatles learned the song. I mean, Paul McCartney liked it, learned it. The Beatles started playing it in Liverpool, and uh, all the groups in England started playing it. And then an English group called the Swingin' Blue Jeans had a number one hit with it in 1965. So Chan, even though he personally isn't that famous, his song is very famous. And it wound up in the movie Cocktail in the late 80s. It's been in a lot of movies and commercials. Uh, oh, goodness sakes, I got the hippie, hippie shape. Anyway, he's another very good friend of mine, and uh, he, he's lived in Palm Springs on and off for, for years as well. Very nice guy. And, uh, you know, he's part of an early Chicago rock pioneer that a lot of people don't know about. That's me and Chan. Chan is a little roly poly guy. I was used to say roly poly. Very nice guy. Uh, that's, that's a couple of years ago, maybe. And then here's when I had a beard and a mustache. It's me again, believe me. And that was, uh, that was just a few months ago. That's Chan. Okay, now we're moving. Oh, let me play the people shake for you here. This is Chan Romero when he was like 19 years old. who wound up marrying George Harrison of the Beatles and having uh, George's only son with him. With, uh, with him. So, uh, but Chris has an interesting story. His real name is uh, Ezekiel Montanez. Montanez. And in those days, because the way the business was, if you were Chicano or you had a Hispanic last name, it would change your name. Richie Valenzuela became Richie Valens. Ezekiel Montanez became Chris Montez. And, uh, but anyway, he recorded a hit record called Let's Dance, or 1963 maybe, and he was only a teenager. Next thing you know, he's touring England with a, a group that was unknown at the time called the Beatles. So he was on tour with the Beatles in 1963, and during that tour they did their first album. And I've interviewed Chris, and, and he said that he was there when they, you know, they came back from recording with their acetate of their first album. And they were listening to it in the hotel, and Chris was there listening to the first Beatle album before it was released. So he also told me a story that uh, he had a, a fist fight with John Lennon, Chicano. <laughs> and I said, "What happened?" He goes, "Oh, John poured a beer over my head in the bus, and I, you know, you got to jump on for that." So they're rolling around the bus. So. So he's got the distinction of having a fight with the great John Lennon. <laughs> they don't mess with the Chicano. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> it's Chris. And there's Chris with the Beatles. Can you believe it? That's Chris. Frickin' Beatles in 1963. 
the freaking Beatles. They're, they're my favorite band. I love the Beatles. I grew up with that music. Uh, there's Chris. Lately, that was me with Chris. Uh, maybe five years ago. And he's still uh, touring. He's still playing. He's, he's doing great. I'll play his his hit in the early '60s called uh, "Let's Dance."
And we did a record on GMP Crescendo Records called uh, Get Your Baby. It was an instrumental, and I played lead guitar on it. And I'll play you a little bit of that song. This was, we were only 15 years old. I'm 
I'm gonna do a little song for you now that'll make you clap your hands, kick your feet, and as a matter of fact, it'll tear you up. La 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 la. Midnighters, they're still around. Uh, they were probably the most popular band in East LA at the time, and their lead singer was like uh, the girls would swoon when he'd sing ballads, you know, the Frank Sinatra kind of figure. But there's a zillion groups out of East LA. The Sisters were like a uh, Chicana version of the Supremes, and they were great singers. Ursi, the girl on top, uh, she wound up singing for El Chicano in 1970, and then uh, she had an album out last year, produced by Ry Cooter, so she's still doing it. And there was some other female, there was a, uh, an all-girl band called Four Queens, so I know a lot of female singers in the East Side Sound. This was a big concert at, at Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles, and it had all the East Side bands, most of the most popular ones that were on there, see Mark and Escorts, Count the Headliners, Romancers, Sisters. So there was this huge scene that, uh, it was a, one of those things, you never know when there's going to be a burst of creativity like that in a particular city at a particular time. But he's telling that it's a magic one back then. Uh, there's another flyer from that event. And uh, I was asked to be a uh, uh, consultant for an exhibit that was uh, done up at the Seattle Experience Music Project, a world-class museum. And they have a 5,000 square foot exhibit called uh, American Sabor. Latinos and U.S. popular music. And I loaned them a lot of my flyers and, and, and different things and interviewed people for them. And they blew this thing up like five, six feet, you know. And so it's in the museum. This flyer is in the museum. So it's so cool that what we did way back then is now in a major museum. And cool. And right now that exhibit is in San Antonio, at the Museo Alameda. They made an album of that concert, East Side Review. Uh, there's been a lot of compilations put out from the East Side Sound of the 60s, East Kelly Rock and the Value. Also, in the mid 60s, a group came out of Texas, uh, the Chicano here with a turban on. I don't know if you've heard of the song Wooly Bully. Wooly Bully. Well, they had a number one hit with that in 1965, and he's a Chicano from, from Texas. But again, see, the public didn't know that. New Santa Shad and the Pharaohs. Another group, Question Mark and the Mysterians, had a big hit, number one hit all 96 years. They were Chicanos uh, from Michigan, Saginaw, Michigan. And their lead singers, Question Mark, is a, quite a character. I talked to him for a couple of hours a few months ago, maybe last year. And uh, he's publicly, even back in the 60s, he would tell the public, he wouldn't tell him his name, he was just Question Mark. And he said he was born on Mars, he's from Mars. And he's serious, you know, he says no, I'm from Mars. And uh, his real name is Rudy Martinez. And the body of he says from Mars. And he's an interesting guy. <laughs> uh, that's, that's my second band called the Men From Sound. That's me in the middle here. Men From Sound. And here's a flyer that we were on, the Men From Sound. 
There's another one. This is during the psychedelic period. The Emeralds, the Memphis Sound, Animal Tribe. And this is my third group called 1984. This was in the year 1969. That's me sitting down on the phone. And we did a record for Cap Records. And here's Santana. I put them in here. Um, you know, Carlos Santana, from what I've heard, I've heard that. I don't think anybody knows any different, but he doesn't consider himself a Chicano because he was born in New Mexico. But he came here at a very young age, so it's one of those things, you know, are you a Chicano if you, you're bicultural, you live most of your life in the States, and you're kind of more Chicano. Because technically you're supposed to be born here, but either way, He's Mexican-American, huh? And he should have made a lot of noise. He's still making noise. Good noise. But here's another group from East L.A. They're called El Chicano. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. But in 1970, they had a national hit. They came out of East L.A. And they had a hit called Viva Tirado. Um, this is one of their albums, El Chicano Revolution. And what they did, they did a picture of their band here, and they superimposed Pancho Villa and Zapata up here in the front. And actually, they took this picture was a picture of, that Pancho Villa and Zapata were actually in, and they superimposed themselves in. It's pretty cool. There's Malo, you put them up on the Bay Area, multi-racial group. And here I pop up again. I'm 21 years old and signed to Ode Records. Produced by Lou Adler, who produced some famous groups, the Mamas and the Papas, Carol King, Cheech and Chong. And there was our record with Lou Adler. And this was what they called the, the first Chicago rock concert. This was 1972 at Cal State Los Angeles. As you can see, there's Tierra and El Chicano, Mark Guerrero with the Mud Brothers, Carmen Moreno and Elijah. 72 on Capitol Records as a solo artist. It's called Ian Brown. Oh, I'm playing a little bit of that. Let me see what it is. Goodness. I'm playing a loose guitar. I'm playing these big guitars. Sound that I showed you earlier, several years before this. And 
But they did an important song called Tempo para un Cambio, Time for a Change, that has a life of its own because in the 90s it appeared on a compilation album, and then it was used, uh, Tierra recorded a new version of it, and they used it for the Obama campaign, it was Time for a Change. And uh, so I'm proud of my friend George that his song is, seems to be uh, enduring. But I also wanted to put him up here because you can see that Chicanos covered all bases. You know, we, uh, look, these guys look like Led Zeppelin, right? And this is like a heavy rock band. This is, they were a really a, a heavy rock group. And uh, great, they had two great singers. Those are the other three guys. The guy on the left uh, later was in uh, El Chicano, still with El Chicano today. The guy in the middle plays with me a lot, Ronnie Reyes, to this day. And that's a picture of them back in 72. There's another group called Ruben and the Jets. They did two albums in the early 70s, and uh, they were signed by Frank Zappa for the Mothers of Invention, who was a major rock star back then. Here's a red bone. They dressed like Native Americans, and they had this Native American image. And they had a huge hit called Come and Get Your Love. You probably heard it in commercials. Come and get your love. Um, but anyway, the two main guys are actually Chicanos from Fresno. I don't know who's the Fresno guy is. But uh, the guy here on the left and the guy here, um, they're actually Vasquez. But they changed their name to Pat and Lolly Vegas. But the real name is Pat and Lolly Vasquez. But they had a huge hit. They were very big in the early 70s. And then uh, there I am with uh, that's Pat Vegas. I actually played with Redbone uh, about three, four years ago. And right to my right here, to my left, is George Ochoa, the same guy who was in the Memphis Sound, who was in uh, the road camp by Gambia. So we shared a little time playing together again in 2004. That's my. Uh, 1973 group called Tango. We recorded for a &M Records. That's us. That was a cover of our album. That was one of our singles. And that was us playing at the Roxy Theater in Hollywood. That's me there with the guitar in the middle. Freddie Fender had a big hit in the late 70s, several hits. That's Freddie Fender when he was young in the 50s. He signed that to me. I met him in Vegas in 1980. And that's us in his dressing room. That's me. I don't even recognize myself in the same pictures. And then the Chicanos got into uh, the punk scene. This is, yeah. Uh, the punk scene came along in the late 70s, and the Chicanos were there too. And one of the best uh, groups was called Los Illegals from East LA. Pretty cool out of those Eagles, man, they wanted it. And they were very punky, and they, uh, they did a real cool record called L.A., E-L-L-A-Y. And uh, Willie Heron, the leader, this guy here in the middle, he's a great visual artist. He's a genius of a muralist and a visual artist. That's one of his paintings down below. He uh, does the most amazing murals that are still protected by the, the state now in East L.A. The Los Illegals in the uh, early 80s. And uh, I also played with Los Illegals in 1986 for about six months. And I want to play, before I go on, I want to play a little clip. <laughs>
And there were a lot of other punk groups in East LA, those Plugs, the Odd Squad, the uh, Undertakers. And uh, actually Los Lobos, is Los Lobos, they actually kind of came out of that punk scene because they were playing a lot of those venues with a lot of the punk bands. But then they'd pull out the guitarons and do a, a jazz. I was like, holy shit. So, so, so they do like a rock and roll song, they go into this, and uh, that got them some attention, got them a record deal, and they've been around for 35 years since. And that's me in the middle with Los Lobos uh, in the mid-90s. And uh, my dad actually did an album with them, Los Lobos with Pablo Guerrero, Papa's Dream. I don't know if you guys know this album, it was 1995. And it was actually nominated for a Grammy. And my dad played their father. And uh, he was like, he narrated the songs. He was Papa Lalo. And, uh, and it was, it was, the album had this whole theme that they were going across the country in a balloon, hot air balloon. And then the songs were in between. And, uh, I sang on one song and this song about it. And that's an album I had out in the late 80s. You see, you don't recognize me. That's a painting. Well, and this was really great. My brother produced a show in, in Palm Desert for my dad's 60th anniversary uh, in, in music. It was called Lalo and Amigos. And what a lineup. And we had Cesar Chavez. I performed uh, Don Tosti. Uh, Mariachi Sol de Mexico, a little Joe La Familia, Daniel Cortez, and everybody performed Lalo songs. And that was a tremendous event in 1992. And here's a cool picture, look at this. Eddie Olmos, me, my dad, Cheech Marine, Cesar Chavez, and my brother. It's a cool picture. And, uh, that event. Uh, here's a compilation called Rasa Rock. It came out in the late 90s and it's got Guerra and Sapo and Santana, Malo Azteca and Chicago. But it also has my friends from Yaki with their song uh, Time for Change. So, uh, and it's, this was a little career highlight for me. I got to play with uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Eric Burden, The Animals and House of the Rising Sun. Uh, that's Eric Burden. That's Cesar Rosas of Los Lobos over here. That's me. And uh, Hurricane Ramon, and that was in uh, 1995. And here's Flaco Jimenez, Freddie Fender, and uh, Texas Tornadoes. And here's me playing with uh, Flaco. Uh, my dad and I went and performed in Paris, France in 1998. It was an American music festival. One day was for Chicano music. It was Lalo Guerrero with Flaco Jimenez. And, uh, like 10 crazy Chicanos in Paris partying. It was unbelievable. But we went to a radio station to promote the show, and uh, Flacco backed me up on one of my songs called Oh Maria. And I, I'm sorry, I don't have a tape. I wish I had a tape of that, but I've never got a copy of that. And here's me and my dad and the bass player, Mitterrand player, Lorenzo Martinez, in Paris, France, in front of Notre Dame Cathedral, 1998. That was the first time my dad had been to Europe. He'd never left the Western Hemisphere. We're running a little short of time. Okay, we move this up forward. That's me and Flacco and my dad. And then, uh, then I formed another band called Radio Aslan to play my music. It's like a nine piece uh, in 2002. And then we started playing gigs with Tierra and Malo, Mark Gordon, Radio Aslan. That's another one. Another one. My dad and I playing a, a fundraiser for the documentary Chicano Rock, which is now on. And then this was a thrill for me. As I told you, I love the Beatles. Uh, in 2004, I went to Liverpool, England, and actually played at the Cavern where the Beatles started out. And I got to meet and play with a lot of the musicians and played with them and grew up with them. And, and, so and then I went back in 2006 and played that's, that's the end of the Cavern. And this is a couple of pictures of that TV show I told you, the Trini Lopez special that I'm on. That's me singing uh, with Tierra. And it's Trini Lopez, Little Willie G of the Midnighters, I mean. And uh, so that's going to be airing uh, any, any day. So that's, that's the slide presentation. I'm done with that. <laughs> Thank you.
I've never really done it before, so I didn't know how long it would take, and I was just kind of winging it, and I get signals, and I have to rush it along. But, uh, that was it. How are we doing? I was just going to say, remember, uh, his website is markguerrero.net, and uh, also in the back we have Mark's CD back there, 15 bucks, but last year on PBS they had a special Pablo Guerrero, the original Chicano, and this is back there, $25, it's a DVD and a CD uh, right here that was produced by uh, him and his brother. Also, remember I said this is a study session, this isn't just fun, but in the library, uh, back here you can find Lalo Guerrero, My Life. You can find the book called Land of a Thousand Dances, that where a lot of his material and he's quoted in here. Uh, and Land of a Thousand Dances, if you go to Amazon.com, I got this for five bucks hardback. And it's that whole history of what he's talking about. And then there's another book back there, it's called A Voices of Latin Rock, and this is all about Northern California rock. Uh, my wife Betty and I were in Russia about three years ago. We're riding around and some guy goes, what are you? I said, American. And he goes, he says, well, what are you? I said, I'm Mexican. And he whips out a Santana disc and throws it on. So Santana anywhere in the world, everybody knows who that Mexican is. Also, you can check out uh, uh, the DVD, Lalo Guerrero. Uh, it's available for checkout. And also, this Christmas, they did another, he worked on another disc called Chicano Rock, a PBS special. So again, this is a history of Chicano Rock, and you can get this all in the library. So the library is no longer a boring place. As I told you, my dad and I started playing together quite a bit um, in the late 90s, and this was a, a thing we did in Tucson, Arizona, in my dad's hometown. And um, a couple songs here. I had a ponytail at the time, you won't recognize me again. Let's see if this is going to play. It doesn't seem to be advancing. Press the play after that press.
exclusive. You guys are going to first want to see it. This is uh, me doing uh, my dad's with Chico Suaves on that Trini Lopez uh, special. It should be on soon. <clears throat> I'm say I had a cold. I'm making excuses. <laughs> I had a cold like three, four days before the thing. I was on antibiotics. And, just, and so I had a little bit of phlegm. I wasn't real happy with the... When I started singing, I felt all this phlegm, and then I... And I gave myself I, I, To the man! He yeah. opened on many doors for Chicanos in the music industry. He's considered the father of Chicano music, the late, great, and beloved Lalo Guerrero. Yeah. But you know what? Tonight we got his son, Mark Guerrero, who's going to do a tribute to Lalo with us. Our friend, Mark, Mark Guerrero. Let's give it up for Mark Guerrero. We're going to do this song, and we're going to dedicate it to Lalo. Carla Ponga se ha gustado, ya los tiempos han cambiado. Tú te estás muy habitado, estás tú te atravesado. Antes se bailaba el swing, boogie boogie chirba, pero eso ya torció y esto es lo que sucedió. Los chicos suaves bailan rumba, bailan la rumba y de zumba, bailan guarachas a rosón. El golpecito y el danzón, los chucos suaves bailan rumba, bailan la rumba y le zumba, bailan guaracha sabroso, el golpecito y el danzón. We also have a few other guests here that you'll meet in a few minutes. But again, uh, I think what you're getting a feel here is, is a getting a feel for Lalo Guerrero has been the soundtrack of Chicano history ever since the 1940s. And we have a few guests here that I'm going to put on the spot because they came here and uh, they were there. Is your dad Oh, no. Oh, okay. You're there. Yeah, he's coming back. But anyway, somebody also, oh, he, he came with his discs, huh? or this, these are yours, huh? Okay. This is Father Jose Rubio. Show us what you got. Um, I'm a longtime fan of Lalo Guerrero, and I have two records, albums, that uh, until you see the picture. But people that I knew personally who said they were great friends of Lalo Guerrero, I don't know if you know them, but Pepe Rolón and Jaime Javín, do those names well, Jaime Javín, wasn't he the voice of the Dodgers? He was. Yeah. And um, the other person who also recorded for Imperial Labels was uh, Manuel Este Acuña. He was my dad's producer. Who um, remembers him and remembered him very long. So Absolutely. I have long, good memories of him. Great. Thank you. Then I have a good friend here, Senor Galvan, who uh, I want him to say a few words what moved him to get down here. Usually he's uh, working in his yard and uh, when he heard about the Lala program, he told his daughter, I'm going. Yo comencé a comprar la música de Lalo los últimos de 40 y todo que lo es Comencé a escucharlo, me gustó mucho. Y que viva siempre su música. I want you to have a word from, there's someone that, had, that brought Lalo Guerrero every year to San Jose, either to the 16th or 5 de Mayo. And uh, he also is a performer himself and has always done Lalo's music. I'd like a word from Noam Montoya. Yay! And uh, he's an actor every Christmas you can see him at San Juan Bautista. 
Bautista with Luis's plays uh, during the Christmas. How are we doing? My name is Noel Andrea. I have the pleasure of meeting your father in the early 80s in Gilroy. But I didn't know who it was. I just heard this man sing this hilarious song. No tortillas, no chicanos on TV. And I went, this guy is great. Who is he? So I went backstage, got to meet him, introduced himself. He said, I'm not looking at him. The Lalo Guerrero with the squirrels, the sardinas. I, go, I grew up with you in Texas. This heat to the radio. So we hit it off, my father and I. And I've been honored and blessed to call him my friend. And the Lord of the Desert, he says, You're my adopted son. Uh. <laughs> he was a character. Lalo was truly an inspiration to me and a lot of musicians that we've seen up here. Uh, but my biggest honor that your father presented to me was the first time I brought him up to San Jose. We had a reception at our house. He performed for everybody as he always did. It was, it was his party, but he performed. You know, that's loud. And I got to do a couple of pieces for him. And as I was driving him back to his room, uh, he asked me if I was willing to learn some of his parodies and keep singing them after he was gone. And to me, that is always important. You know, and uh, <clears throat> I miss him. But he's not gone. Uh, because I will continue trying to do his songs as funny as Lalo did, because there was only one Lalo there. Mm -hmm. and, but he, he said, hey, come close. You come close to doing this stuff. <laughs> so it, it is an honor to, to meet you for the first time. And, uh, you know, and I encourage a lot of young people to pursue their uh, artistic dreams also. That's what I would get them. Do it, man. Don't worry what people say, just do it. If you screw up, screw that. Just keep going, man. You know? <laughs> and so, um, yeah, it's, it's an honor to, to, to be in the presence of his son, who's also a composition. So that's what I'm going to do. Thank you very much.